I just shut Chrome down, so hopefully it works now. Perfect. Yeah, it says setting up meeting for YouTube Live. All right, perfect. Here we go. We'll put this in the group. All right, so how's everybody's weekend? How's everybody's Sunday going so far? Great. Great. Them bars Amazing. are hidden, Jessica. Them well, bars are hidden. Bars are hidden. <laughs> I tell you, do the work. They gonna come, okay? Do the work, but you gotta do the work first. We gonna actually finish off our conversation that we had last week. Um, Hold on, let me just type in here, call starting now. Can somebody click the link that I just put in the Telegram group and then make sure, because YouTube, I just want to make sure that I don't uh, have any problems with the video. Um, how do we get in the Telegram group? How do you get in the Telegram group? Yeah. Um, are you my student? Uh, I, I got a course, I, I don't know. Um, well, it's a week for, um, it's actually in your, it's like in the welcome letter, the telegram group's in there, but I'll put the link um, in here. The telegram group is literally for everybody though, so it's not even just, and yeah, works. okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, all right, and then let me just drop this in one more. Everybody on this call should be in a telegram group. Is everybody else in it? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, just making sure. Also, if you go to any YouTube link like that you've ever seen prior, the telegram group is in the um, comment section. Like that group is for everybody. The only group that's limited for students only is the Facebook group. But if you have the Zoom link, then you should have that also. But I just put it in the chat on the Zoom so you can um, access it. I do just wanna say something before we start class for the 15th million time, you guys. Um, I only have one website, okay? And I only have one Instagram page. So my website is this. Please do not go to nothing else. Um, this is my website. All right. Justinvest.com. That's it. If you want mentorship, go to course. All right. And then from there, you just press start making money. And then it's pretty self-explanatory. But the reason I'm going over this and saying it is because um, the reason I'm going over this and saying it is because somebody else messaged me talking about how they got scams because it's like people, I don't know how they're getting people's emails. Maybe they're going through my Instagram followers and collecting their emails from their bios. Um, Cause you know, on Instagram, you could actually put your email address. So they're emailing people saying, hi, like this is Jessica. I see you wanted to take my course and then send them the, a link that's not my link and then just taking people's money. So please do not sign up for nothing. Also, I don't email nobody, okay? So if you get an email from somebody claiming to be me, it's not me. Also look at the actual like email because it will have some letter that's off or some extra thing in there. So I just wanna say that before we start today. Um, but I do want to actually, is she on here? Tiara, you're on here? Yes, I'm here. Hey girl, hey. hey. All right, so if you were on last week, um, if you were on actually two weeks prior, we had one of my fun, most, like one of the, one of my top phenomenal students. Um, his name is Nellis. He was on a call. And then somebody asked the question, can I get somebody from my automated student group to talk and not just like my private students, even though Nellis wasn't a private student, he was a group student. But um, so then I said, okay, well, I'll bring Tiara on. Tiara has never been a private student. She's never been a group student. She only took the online automated course. And so last week, we kind of like, after I went over entries, she kind of like broke down a few things about the course, but um, it was, we kind of ran out of time and people were supposed to be asking her questions. 
So then we said this week we were going to actually go into the questions that people wanted to know. It's a lot of trading questions. Um, we screenshotted all the questions from that people wrote in the Facebook group. And then some people also wrote her questions via Instagram. So she'll go over them with you guys also. So I'm going to read the name of the person and the question, and then she's just going to answer it. All right. Um, let me go to it. Okay. Uh, everybody say hey to Tiara, by the way. <laughs> so, hey, Tiara. Hey, Tiara. What's up, Tiara? All right. Yeah. So, so um, and I also feel like this is just a really good idea because it's kind of like when I was in fitness, like some clients, I always had a six pack, but I only had a six pack because I ate healthy. But people think just my body was made like this. And I'm like, no, I did the work. But people automatically assume, oh, because you're healthy, like I need to hear from somebody that actually lost a whole bunch of weight and they want to see the transformation people. So um, I think it's good that you guys can ask, like so that you guys are actually in the room with actual students that have been successful, profitable, so forth and so on. So you guys can ask questions directly. Um, the only questions that won't be answered is for her to check your homework, because again, y'all all got the automated course and that is you have to do the work. And if you are not capable of checking your own homework for people that are like on YouTube and not in the course, please don't buy the course because I tell people up front from the very beginning, like your homework will not be checked in an automated course. OK, so the first question is, how did you flip your account weekly, Tiara? That question is from Oshan Badan. OK, so Oshan, um, and to everyone else who wants to know how I fl flip my account weekly. Um, so basically, I marked up. Um, and when you get to the end of your course, Jessica has a video about um, like the trading plan. And in the trading plan, she also tells you about um, kind of like opening up two positions. So um, at first, I would open up a small position, um, just a, like a small position based on a lot size. And then once I um, maybe got another confirmation while my trade was already in profits, I felt comfortable opening up a second position, maybe after a second break in the retest, and I just used a larger lot size. And I would just let those two ride out when I hit my TP, close it out. And before you know it, in a week, I had already doubled my account. All right. So for people who are like actually just hearing you from the first time or whatever, um, again, I always say the numbers don't matter because, again, I have this saying, what somebody eat don't make you shit, whatever the case may be in a very vulgar way. That sounds bad, but it's true. Like you have to do your own independent work. But here you can go ahead and go over your numbers um, if you like. Sure. So I started my account with $1,300 and by the end of week one, I was at $2,800 actually. So I kind of made a little bit over double. But um, yeah, and I don't take a lot of trades just because while I was in demo, I realized the more trades I took, the bigger the probability of me actually losing a trade. So I just kind of scaled it down. So if I take three trades, then I hit all three trades. If I take six and I lose one, I don't want to lose trades. So I just, the fewer trades I take, then I just rather just take the profits off the table and walk away like that. And then let's actually go into that for a second before um, we continue with the next question. So you guys know how I always say, like, you don't trade everything every week because everything's not ready. That's why you guys have a certain amount of pairs that you mark up, right? And then once you have the confirmation for those pairs, that's when you actually execute the trade. But you have a choice between a few. And of course, you don't want to look at everything. That's why you only have up to seven pairs. And then once you guys actually graduate from the course, um, on the very last video, I talk about like the pairs that you didn't like while you took the course, you can drop a few. So you can go down to three or four actual pairs. And then from there, you wait on your setups, but they're just not going to always be a setup. And like um, Omar said a long time ago, actually a very long time ago, is just because the market is open doesn't mean the market is ready for you. All right. So just always keep that in mind. And y'all know I had the um, summit this past weekend so like literally I feel like a zombie right now because I just been on back-to-back -back flights like and then I had to fly to my friends event yesterday and then I'm just getting back and I'm like exhausted but we gonna push through this call okay 
Um, all right, the next question is from MJ. Is rewatching the course videos the best action step to get the direction of the market correct for the bars patterns? Okay, so I feel like rewatching the course videos is always the best action to take. Um, and Oh, my bad. Y'all had hit me. But a few people had asked me something similar on Instagram um, in my story once about like, how do I make sure that I get like the market in the correct direction? If that's the question, if I'm understanding correctly. So actually, when I went through the course, just to be 100 percent honest, I use double screens and my laptop because what I would do is put Jessica in, on my laptop. I will watch the videos and then. As she's talking, first of all, I will watch it straight through. No notes, no nothing, just straight focus. If anybody talked to me, my phone ring, if I was distracted, I would stop it because it didn't have my undivided attention. I'm just like that type of student. That's how I learn. So then after I watch it, I will watch it a second time and take notes because now it's my time to write down what I felt was important or, you know, make my little notes. Okay, this is what I have to do. Da, 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 da. So then on my first screen, I will open up a chart and then I would imitate what she did in the video. And then I will compare it to my laptop to say, okay, this is what it looked like in the video. And then on my second screen on my desktop, I would then like redo it on another chart just to make sure. And so I did that for all of my charts, for all of my pairs. And then I would just wait to see if the market played out. Um, so always rewatching the videos definitely helps with anything you're trying to like master in the course. Cause obviously the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Um, I also went back and watched her YouTube videos. They're very helpful, even though like they're from like maybe a year ago or two years ago. Um, I got a lot of little nuggets from the YouTube videos. So I just feel like the more you practice, the easier it will be. And just don't complicate things. Just take it for exactly what she says it is. Like don't, what whatever you already know, unlearn it and then learn from scratch. Um, at the rate in which you were compounding your account one to two and three, what method one oh i'm sorry not week one okay okay let me re-ask this question aj said at the rate of which you were compounding your account week one two and three what method were you using were you scalping at all or was it simply marking them on the weekends and executing them and how many trades per week did you do Okay, so the most trades that I've taken per week, I would have to say would be four or five in one week. And then what I would do is wait for the larger moves. So the larger the move, the more the pips. And then um, I would, some of them I did scout. So like I said, some of them I would wait until I got a second confirmation for another entry and just like scalp that part. But ultimately, I would just wait for my regular move, my regular confirmations. Once I got my confirmation, I would enter the market. And then once it's already a few hundred dollars in profit, then, yeah, I'm scalping it to my TP and then I'm done. And that is you marked up at the beginning of the week, correct? Before the yeah, week I will mark up at the beginning of the week. Um, but just sometimes I will fall behind because I work and my schedule is not like a regular schedule. So today I might work 12 hours, tomorrow I might work a whole 24 hours. Um, so there were days I could not mark up on the weekend. And so um I would just like take a full day of rest because I know I'm tired. And then I would just look at the chart, like with the fresh pair of eyes after I've gotten rest. And then I would say, okay, I marked up all seven pairs. This one's not ready. That one's not ready. This one's not ready. Okay. This is ready or it should be ready soon. I will wait for my alerts and then just take the trade. Sometimes I'm really marking up like, right. Sometimes I've even seen trades, like literally setting up as I'm marking it up. Then I just take the trade. Does anybody have any questions about that before I go to the next question? No, everybody good? 
Okay. Sandy McCloy said, um, hi, Tiara. I have a trend line question. I seem to be slightly off sometimes when it comes to my trend lines. Is there anything that I should check or do when drawing them? Okay, so trend lines, there is no like perfect trend line um, in my book. Like there's no perfect trend line. Like um, I could open out a chart example because like with trend lines, it's literally what your eyes see. So I sometimes draw two trend lines for like the same area. So like I have a, um, let me see if I could pull up a chart of, um, of like go on a daily time frame, and I have two trend lines in the same little area for that. Um, and so what I will do is I'm gonna see if I can share screen really quick. Yeah, what I at the very bottom of the chart. Okay, I pressed the wrong thing. Hold on. Sorry guys. Not everything disappeared. Uh, okay, there it goes. Share screen. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Oh, he's so handsome. Oh, thanks. Okay. I get froze daily. Okay, so this is go on a daily time frame. So if you look in this area, can y'all see this? Yes. <laughs> like there is a yes. trend line right here. That red is a trend line. I'm gonna make it bold for y'all. But I also have another one right here. Because at first, before price fell through there, I was looking for just here. But then as I looked at it again, I'm like, wait, price might fall a little bit lower to here. And then in my eyes, price actually caught the trend right here, this trend line. It didn't, it didn't really do anything here. Price didn't respect that. So, okay, when I saw price didn't respect this, I went back to the charts. I'm like, what did I miss? And then I saw another trend line. And Jessica tells you in the course that you only need two points to create a trend line. So that's actually another trend line. Does that make sense? Yes. I have trend lines going through here. I color coordinate my trend line so I know, okay, if I see red, that's on a daily. So if I go down to another time frame, I know that if price is approaching that maybe on a one hour, I know, okay, that's a daily, that's a daily trend line. So price could respect that, or it could actually push off of it or it could come to that area and reject. Um, but that's pretty much what I do. I draw multiple trend lines. Like if I even zoomed in on a five minute chart, like I have trend lines everywhere because it's actually what you see. Trading is very uh, subjective. Go to your one hour. Okay. Hey, you're using Jess's color code, right? For your trend line colors? Um, for the most part, I am. It just um I think one of them I changed to turquoise, which I think was my weekly, because I think she was using like yellow. And it was it was kind of hurting my eyes. So I changed it to um turquoise. Which you say uh, you can use whatever colors you want. Yeah, you can use whatever you want. Like, it's not, like, my course is not, like, press auto at the bottom or, okay. All right, so, yeah. So, y'all see how she, like, it's just based off of two points. Yeah. Okay. All right, you can, um, you can stop sharing. Did you say trend lines that um, touch more points than two carry more weight? Yeah, they do, but it's based off a of major structure. I do it based off of structure and time frames. So if I draw a trend line on the daily and it's a daily trend, then I know that's going to be a heavy, heavy area of mm -hmm. resistance when you go down to your one hour. 
so where she showed you that daily structure so like in regards to the more points on minor structure if you have price like okay it touched a whole bunch of times nine times out of ten it's going to break through more or sooner than later because it's already touched in multiple times but the smaller the time frame like the smaller the structure my, you know how i always say minor structure can always easily be broken minor structure can always easily be broken like a five minute the reason people stuff don't get respected is because it's five minutes you know what i'm saying like you're gonna go through price quickly if it's a one hour structure that's a valid structure so a trend line on a one hour a trend line on a four hour like but the thing is and why i say trade like only what you see at that particular point like don't i and i talked about this actually at the fx summit don't ever try to guess the market like only mark up what it is that you see like i don't care what happens two weeks from now like people use sometimes people try to use those huge big bars patterns so y'all know when you when y'all have the homework videos and i'll say like what not to do so you know that video where it was like bars patterns and it was like these super big bars patterns and i had told um, them i was like no your bars pattern only needs to go from here to here Right. And the reason being is because that's only what you see at this particular point. You don't know if a trend line is going to break or if it's going to respect. Nobody knows that. You can't assume that structure is about to break right here. And why do you think that? What has what has given you that reason? That's why even when entries, you don't just enter because of break. It has to retest first. And that's what's your confirmation for that trade. Okay, so um, everybody understand that before I move to the next question? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, Sharice Green said, first, do you set a trend line alerts on your phone? And if so, how do you ensure the alerts sound off? Uh, that word is not supposed to be there, but so that you hear them. Okay, so... Setting alerts was actually one of the things that I had to like get down pat because I wasn't like an alert setter. So I would try to catch my trades just, it was crazy. I was trying to just like make sure I was like watching the charts on my days off like a zombie, which was insane. And then Jessica kept telling me like set alerts. So I went and set the alerts. I set it on, on my um, MetaTrader 4, like from online, not from my phone, but then I connected it like to the notifications to my phone. And so I have only that notification turned on even when my phone is on silent because I work in a hospital. So sometimes I get calls when I'm off that I don't want to take or answer or whatever. I don't want to be bothered. So I will like put my phone on do not disturb, but that alert still comes through. That is literally the only alert I get when my phone is on do not disturb is my alerts for trade and view. And you can set it like that, depending on what kind of phone you have, iPhone, Android, I'm sure they all like have where you can customize your alerts, just set it to where the alert goes to your, um, your phone number. And then you, um, you set your alerts, however you want them. Like, I don't care. I wake up when my, um, thing go off. Like that's a part of discipline as well. Like how bad do you want it? You want it bad enough <laughs> or you going to sleep through the alert? Like it's either or, you can't do both. You're going to either get up and take the trade or you're going to miss it and catch the next one. Does everybody understand what she just said? Does everybody know how to set an alert? Yes. Nope. Not on yes. Floor. Trade no. yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So somebody said no. So, hey, Dominus, um, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I am outstanding. How are you? That's good. That's great. I'm good. Okay, so I am getting ready to share a screen and show y'all how to start an alert real quick before we keep going. So let me just pull up a chart and then let me share a screen. Yes, um, he's. I believe he said he knows how to do it on Trading View, but not on MT4. Um, I don't use. I, I don't use MT4 on a computer. I only use Trading View and the MT4 on my phone. 
So I mark up and it's only because I'm not against MT4 on a computer. Like I've had it on my computer. I actually still have it on my computer downloaded, but like I hate MT4 on a computer because it's so ugly. Like my trend lines don't look the same. Like I just feel like trading view is super clean when it comes to marking up in the charts and they just like, it is easily like in how I mark up my charts, I don't use MT4, but Still, I think some people don't know how to get it to their phone Um, because I heard multiple people say no. So is there anybody that needs me to go over this before I move on to the next question then? Yes, please. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to double click this. Like, let's say price was back here and I'm waiting for this to break and retest. But let's say I mark up my whole chart and structures here and I'm like, okay, I know this is going to sell, right? But I need to know at this point, like, remember, we just had the conversation where you don't know, like, you can have an idea that price is about to drop, especially depending on where you are. So you see out here, this had already hit our negative 27. So that already hit a TP level on structure, right? And it's never really pulled back fully to the negative 61.8. It came close, but it never touched it. So we already have our rules about all our bid levels, right? So at this point, we like, okay, what's going to happen? There's one or two things that's going to happen. And again, I want to keep beating this in y'all's head because it's so important in regards to, you can't assume that structure is just going to break just because it's here. Now we have an indication that it's going to break because again, negative 27 has already been hit and this is a minor structure zone. Then here we have basically like, this isn't a full break and retest of a zone because price is still sitting here, but you still want to make sure this is going to break and retest and drop opposed to opposed to coming back up to here before dropping. Does everybody understand what I mean in regards to that? So what you would do is set your alert. So at the point in which price gets to this area, like Tiara said, you don't want to just be sitting at the charts like a zombie. Like, honestly, if I had to sit at charts, like I probably wouldn't like trading, to be honest. Like, that is, that's not how I trade at all. Like, so what you want to do, you want to double click this. Oh, I'm in replay mode. So I have to go out of replay mode to go back to this. So give me one second. I'm so glad you said that. I was sitting there freaking out. I was like, that looks nothing like my chart. <laughs> yeah, no. When you click replay, um, it, it doesn't let you set the alert. So here, you're going to press add alert on trend line. So like Tierra said, you have two things in regards to um, to to like it notifying you, you can either have it send a text message and then you can also have it send a, a email to your, like you can have it send an email or an email to your text. What I do, and this is completely free, is I just have TradingView app downloaded on my phone. So just like Instagram, if somebody DMs you or message you or sends a picture or tags you in something and it notifies you, I have all my Instagram actually on mute, but if somebody notifies you on even, let's say, I don't know, Facebook, whatever y'all use and you get a notification, it's the same exact thing with trading. So I use once per minute just because my phone blows up so much that like in order for me to actually pay attention to it, I need it to like keep ringing. Right. So I'll press once per minute, but you could do once per bar close. You can do once per bar and then, of course, like if it's once per bar closed, just make sure you're aware of what time frame you set it on, because, you know, on an hour, that bar close is going to be every hour. Does that make sense? That makes sense. It makes sense. Wait, yeah, it makes sense. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, Repeat the whole thing. Or which part? No, just that last part about the, I guess, are you saying if you set the alert on the one hour, it will only alert you on the one hour? It Well, it's not a thing of only alerting you on the one hour, but if it's once per bar or once per bar closed, a bar is only made every hour. So if you do it on the hour chart, when you set the alert, you're only going to get alerted every hour. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. But I do once per minute. Um, and then I, you you can even pick here. Like I do it once it crosses my trend line. 
because I'm setting the alert on my trend line, but you can do it on a horizontal line, whatever you want, right? And then once that structure is there, again, we talk about this all the time. Once price gets here, do I see exhaustion or do I see literally like, um, um, like do I see an impulse or do I see like exhaustion or momentum, right? So here we see this exhaustion, but it's going to the downside, which means nine times out of 10, this trend line is going to break. Does that make sense? But you still have to understand where you are. So I'm also at a zone. So even though that broke, okay, where am I? I'm at this zone. So you see how price retested the trend line as well as the zone twice and then actually broke down to the downside. Uh-huh. Jessica, I want to add something while you have the chart open right there. So um, a few things I want to add. So I would suggest uh, just adding trend lines to your chart just for the practice of actually getting the alerts down path because the worst thing you could do is think you set the alert properly and then you don't have it set properly or you have it set wrong like play with it get used to it like you guys have to get in the habit of figuring things out like play with it get used to it see that it works see what works best for you which time frame you want to put it on if you want one alert two alert i i also have it on the um once per minute you can customize the alerts by like i always put if i'm you know once it crosses the trend line going up once it crosses the trend line going down i also move my trend lines just a little bit further away so that once the alert is triggered is actually where I can bring my attention to the charts and not like right at the last minute. Um, and also another thing is once I do get the alert on my phone, I don't delete it. I actually leave the alert because what it'll ask you, it'll ask you like, I forget exactly the verbiage, but it'll basically say like, if you want to like, let the alert continue, I will let it continue because sometimes the trade is actually not ready when it alerts me, but I leave the alert so that maybe in another, you know, 10, 15, 30 minutes, an hour, it, the alert keep going, going off. And then that will remind me later. Cause I don't know how busy you guys are, but sh- I'm pretty busy. And so I'll look back later because I'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. You know, EJ is almost ready. Let me look back at it because it gave me another alert. And then I'll be like, "Okay, it's ready now. Okay, so does everybody understand what she just said? Because she just dropped some gems in there and I want to make sure everybody just understood it. Yes. Even what she just said about the whole like when the alert gets hit, that's when I go back and look at the market. I don't execute at that point because at that point you have to see again, did it respect it or did it reject it or what is happening right now? Like that's just when you want to go back to the market. And the reason it's so important is because when you do your analysis for the week or whatever it case may be, you don't want to just be staring at the charts. Like who wants to do that? You know what I'm saying? So you set your alert. So you're not like somebody asked me one time, they were like, how many hours do you just spend at the chart? I'm like, you don't have to just stay at a chart all day long. Now, if you're in your learning stage, you're like going through the course, you're going to be at the charts a lot, but you're not at the trading point yet. When you get to the trading point, you're not just staring at the charts. Like that's the biggest way to lose money also, because you start psyching yourself out and like trying to see things that you didn't really see and make something of something that's not there. Like the longer you just staring at your charts nonstop, that's when people like start scalping and just like messing up. And there's two different things in scalping, okay? Because even if you scalp and you're a scalper, it's a complete difference from opening a position in your phone. And then as soon as you, as soon as it turns blue, you close it. Like that's not scalping. That's called anxiety in the market and freaking out. What scalping <laughs> actually is, is is shorter positions in a trade. Like I'm an intraday trader all day long. I don't got time to scalp. But for people that do scalp, there are pe- like, you guys know, I don't teach you whether you want to be a scalper, intraday trader or swing trader. I teach you structure and based off of structure, you can apply it to any time frame, right? So let's say this position here, let's say, okay, we know once this does this break and retest, it has to like literally fall, right? So let's say we're looking at this structure as an impulse here, our correction, and then our continuation down. A scalping position for somebody, let's say after it made this impulse right here, right? 
once price respected, like we have literally, you see how I drew this little minor and this light purple is very minor supply and demand zone, right? So I drew this supply and demand zone here. Let me draw this line in a different color so people can see. A scalping position is if somebody says, okay, this already touched and came here. This came back right here. I'm gonna take a buy to the retest of this structure because I know it has to retest. That's an actual calculated scalping decision that somebody can make in a scalping move. The only time I'll ever scalp is like in the middle of consolidation, but even then it depends on what time frame that consolidation is. Cause you can have consolidation on a one hour or four hour structure and that consolidation literally be a range of a hundred to 400 pips. Depending. If it's gold, it could go up to 300, 400 pips. If it's like a regular currency pair, like let's say GU, it could be anywhere between like 50 and 100. All right. And again, it depends on the, the time frame though, too. So like a four hour can be like 50 to 100 on like a GBP pair, but on gold, it could be anywhere between 200, 400. On a 30 minute chart, it can be a good 30, 40 pips. You know what I'm saying? But you're still taking advantage. Like, let's look at this buy right here. <laughs> so this buy on GU, let's say you scalp this position. This is 58 pips from this low to this high. You know what I'm saying? So it's still actual price to take advantage of. Um, and again, like I do look at scalping differently than most people. Some people look at scalping as like, you know, 20 minute increments, 10 to 20 minute increments. I don't look at it as a time thing. I look at it as a structure thing. That smaller move is my scalp. That larger move is my intraday trade. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, okay. I, got a, I got a quick yes. question. If you're okay. scalping from a zone, how do you know that it's just that it's going to like bounce back to the other one instead of just breaking? So because I only do it based off of like, um, it depends. Like, for instance, here, once this is already solidified, like where price is going. Okay, so first off, you got to have price solidified in regards to structure. So like this, we don't have that much consolidation here, but let me go to an actual like consolidating area so that doesn't make sense. Um, okay, so we can use this. So if we know for a fact that we're like looking for a sale in like a scalping area, I'm only going to take it when it gets to the highs. And then I'm gonna drop it back down to the low, right? And then it depends on the time frame too, because that's a very good question and a valid question, but it also just is so many factors that can depend on what's going on. Y'all know how I would have like minor structure consolidation sometimes inside of a larger structure consolidating um, area. That overall move, like if it's not on a one hour or a four hour, I know that move can be broken. Does that make sense? So I'm only, if I'm looking for a sale, I'm only going to scalp it or not even scalp because I just, I just, I'm not a scalper, but I'm only going to take a sale to the, the low of where that is. And this is the thing. This is how you know if it's going to bounce back up. Once it gets to the low and you see like exhaustion and maybe this isn't a good area because we, this is such a higher time frame um, consolidation area right here. But like, you see how when we get to the bottom all through here, we have like this wicked option, like price is letting you know it's coming back up. So you're not just going to hold this sale and then let price come up and take away all the profits that you just made. So I'm only going to take a, a sell from the high to the low of that price. If I see that exhaustion and price doesn't like give me a clear, oh, this is breaking lower past this zone that is consolidating in. I'm going to take my profit before it comes back up to the top of that consolidation. That makes sense. Yeah, I got you. You only take you only take the the zone or take the take the self or not the sell, but take the trade from the zone in the direction of the overall market. Yes. Got it. Yes, but that's only on like minor structure. If it's a higher time frame structure, then it just depends. 
Um, if it's a higher time frame structure, then I would like sometimes take it both ways as long as my fibs confirm it. All right, thank you. No problem. Hey Jess, have you have you ever set the alert and it didn't go off? No. I probably got a problem with mine. I gotta check on because uh -huh. I I set it and and for whatever reason it didn't go off. I did just like you said, so I don't know. There's something wrong. Um, are you sure that you set it to alert you on your phone though and make sure you got your trading view connected to your phone? Because my trading view, so, it's, so what you're saying, it's better to set it on your phone instead of setting it on your computer? No, what I'm saying is, is after you set it on your computer, do you have it to where it's like your trading view? It's connected to your phone. To be on your phone in regards to the app, but you don't set the alert on your phone. All right, yeah, it's, it's connected to the phone. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Trade and view app on your phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're logged in. Yeah. So when you pull up the charts on your phone, do they look exactly like the charts on your computer? Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, okay, when, you, well, when, you're yeah. Logged, when you're logged in. Yeah. yeah. Well, it should definitely set you, um, send it to you. Because as long as you have this alert actions, as long as you have notify on Apple in here, mm. then it will automatically go to it. That great. Yeah. And then you just create it. Yeah, I said it for whatever reason didn't go off, but I'll check. I'll check on it. But yeah, might have to check his notifications in his phone. Oh yeah, check your notifications in your phone and make sure it's um set it's and created. Yeah. Hey Jess. Yes. Or he may need to make sure the alert is on a sound that he can actually hear because that little beep, you know, that don't always cut it. Mm-hmm. I got you. Okay. Um, hold on. All right. Let me go to my next question. The next question is from Katrina. She said, are you combining... I've answered this so many times, but are you combining fundamental and technical analysis when trading, such as, for instance, major news? So last week I noticed somebody had a chart or somebody had spoke and the charts had shot up from an uptrend to a downtrend when the speech began. Then after the speech ended, it started to make its way back up. And this was on the one hour. Okay. So um, Katrina, every, every trader is different. So I am not a fundamental trader. I don't look at news. I don't, um, I don't like, read the news and all of that. So what I do is the basics, what Jess taught in, <laughs> in her course, um, I'm guilty of, I just look at my um, Forex factory. I see what has folders and I pay attention to those pairs. If it is, um, I actually just look at it before I even start trading. And then once my alerts and stuff go off and I'm, I'm about to get into that trade or I'm contemplating on getting into a trade that's actually setting up, I go back to Forex factory and check to see if it has news around that time because I, I'm not about to lie. I don't know uh, what the news mean. I don't know what the percentages mean. I don't follow macro or microeconomics. I actually felt those classes in my undergrad. So I really don't know about um, fundamentals. I just strictly follow what I learned in technicals. That's what I do. And what I have noticed is that those candles have been really helping me out. Like it just happens to play out like I it's not just that morning. thing, too. I'm going to ask, is Nellis on this call? Yes, he is. Hi, Nellis. We, we, we want to talk, okay? I have a whole plan for you, okay? But, um, Nellis, the, I just want a yes or a no. Do you feel as though, well, it's 100% facts, but does, once you know technicals, does it or does it not just line up with news? Lines up perfectly. Oh, well. News just pushes where you need the market to go faster. So as long as your structure is right, it's going to play out. Exactly. Um, well, oh, what you say, Nellis? No, that wasn't me. Oh, okay. Um, so I always talk about this all the time. Even when I talk about fundamentals, you could be a fundamental only trader. Like I have a friend that's a fundamental only trader and he's a great trader, but his capital is extremely large. Like I'm talking about multi-millions. So he doesn't care about entries at all. 
I have a lot of friends that are technical traders only and they 100% are successful traders. Now, I do believe that once you learn about the economy and stuff like that and are able to tie fundamentals with technicals, it just gives you more of confidence when you're in your trades, when you like, let's say you're selling US 30 and you just know what's happening in the economy and you like, oh yeah, this is about to ride for a minute because I already know what's going on because it's just like lines up. But again, for fundamentals, you will F yourself up trying to be a fundamental only trader. And, and because this is the thing, all right? And it's not even just like you have two different types of fundamentals. And I talk about this all the time too. You have fundamentals that is are economic indicators that come out every single month. See so like non-farm payroll, gross domestic product, all of the stuff that you see on Forest Factory with the red folders, right? That's an actual fundamental news, but that is economic indicators. Then you have actual supply and demand of the real world, which is the news that you have to study the economy. And that's why it's so hard to teach because it's like, you just got to read and pay attention. For instance, inflation right now is up like shit. Okay. Gas prices are high everywhere you go. People cannot, I just told actually me and my sister, I don't know if y'all know what Zaspies is, but it's in Atlanta, okay? And they sell chicken. And so she wanted, <laughs> she wanted some Zaspies, but she went to go pick up the Zaspies. She was making a run for me. She went to go pick up the Zaspies and she went through the line and they asked her to pull up. And then she was sitting in the car for like 20, well, 10 minutes before she went in. She was basically like, where's the food? Like y'all had me waiting 25 minutes at Zaspies. This is a fast food restaurant. I don't understand. Then she went inside and the manager was like, we only have one cook back there and we only have two managers on duty and one girl at the cashier. So basically they, they didn't have enough employees, right? And what's happening right now, everywhere you go, there is a shortage of workers. Like if you just open your eyes and just look at certain things and she's like, I just don't understand. Like, I I just don't understand because why would they not have people working? I'm like, why would you go to work though? If you look at it, if you go into a grocery store, a gallon of orange juice is what people get paid per hour. Like I wouldn't work either. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it like that. Like it's some real shit. Like orange juice right now is like $7 and 58 cents or something like that. And I love orange juice, right? And I'm like, it's so crazy because I had um, somebody go to the grocery store for me and I had gave them a $20. I said, give me two gallons of orange juice and they ain't bring me back no change. And I'm like, not that I wanted the change, but I'm like, I mean, you know how like I have people do stuff for me and it's like, you know how they bring you, 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 they always, you're supposed to bring somebody a receipt and a change, whatever. Like, it's just like a, a thing that you just do when you go do something for somebody. Right. So I'm like, where my change? She was like, no, like it was the, like, that was it. The gallon of orange juice, they were both $20. And I was you like, barely oh. had enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, but it's so real though. Like everywhere you go, that's what's happening. So if you just pay attention to the economy as a whole and what's happening in regards to inflation, what's happening in regards to gas prices. Like when I, when I talked about oil literally shooting up, okay. I don't, was this on a Zoom call? I feel like it was on the last Monday Zoom where somebody was like, how did you know it was going to go up? I think he said it was going to go to like 120 or something. At this time, it was like in the 100s. And I was like, well, if you just pay attention, if there's a shortage, then what's going to happen? The prices are going to go up. But the reason it's hard to teach fundamentals like that is because you really just got to pay attention to the economy. Like, it's no way to just actually teach that step by step, like, is no way if somebody just doesn't have the ability or not even the ability, but the interest to like read all the time or like watch the news all the time. But the thing about trading that's so beautiful is once you understand the technicals, they always line up, always. Most of my students are literally just um, technical traders only. All right. Um, hold on. 
Naima said, hi, Tiara. My question is regarding minor structure. After completing the course, do you feel like you understand minor structure and how to capitalize on the moves that happen while price is consolidating? I feel like we kind of just went over that, but you could still talk about it, Tiara. If so, was there any part of the course that you would recommend to focus on better to understand minor structure better? Okay. Minor so structure is assignment number <laughs> two, though. Yeah. But uh, I was just about to say, so if you need help with minor structure, you got to go back to assignment number two. But um, just because I think I'm a different kind of learner, uh, just to be 100% transparent, the best way that I actually learned minor structure is I um, I used to mark up really like on a four hour time, like on a time frame. And so one time I marked up on four hour and I got caught in the trade and I was like, wait, this trade is in major drawdown like is this trade going in the right direction so it had me like second guessing myself so what I did I opened up my chart and I went down to a lower time frame while I was actually in drawdown I took my time and I marked up structure on like the 15 minute then I marked up structure again and I just kept marking it up as a trade was playing out. So it took for me to be in a trade that I thought was potentially going the wrong way because that's what caught my attention. And I hope that that does not happen to anyone else, but that's what happens to me. And it took for me to get in that trade to say, damn, I'm in drawdown. Like, is this trade going the wrong way? And then I went down to the 15 minute time frame, and I drew structure. And then I said, wait, okay, this fit played out. Okay, then I caught the, the, the um, as Jess calls it, the pullback. I caught the pullback and I put a fib on it. I said, okay, this one played out. And then it just clicked for me. Like I had an aha moment and I was like, holy crap. Look at all these fibs inside of these fibs. And the trade played out and I won the trade. But that was my aha moment. I was able to break down the trade while I was in it because that is what caught my focus. So I don't know what what is going to take for you to actually see it but you're going to have to keep reviewing structure thank you okay so three more questions then we out because we got 10 minutes left to 9 30 so hi tiara my question is when doing our top-down analysis should we go back to when jesus was born <laughs> or focus <laughs> on the more current <laughs> 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 Monthly, weekly a daily time frame this is from sky and also should we be doing a full top-down analysis every week even though there might be minimal changes on the higher time frames okay so just to make this real quick because we got a few more questions that was real funny though um okay i feel like you shouldn't go back that far when jesus was born because um you're going to be looking you don't got to go back that far. Like if you back testing, obviously you're going to go back as far as you need to, to areas that you haven't covered. But um, what I do is um, something actually Nola's recommended to me is do two charts. Like I, if I do GJ, I'll mark up GJ this week. Okay. And then I will like open out a second chart and I'll remark it because sometimes you see stuff you didn't see the first time and you can compare the two charts. And then what I'll do the following week is I'll use that second chart, not the first one that I actually took the trade on. I'll use that second chart and I will like look at it and say, okay, I won't go all the way back to like, I'll actually just like kind of like review it. I won't actually do a whole nother top down analysis per se, but I do. So I'll just review it and say, okay, so um, like I showed you guys my daily time frames, I'll say, okay, so price actually broke this trend line. Now I'll think, what am I expecting it to do since it broke this time frame? Is it giving me any other indicators? And it's very important that you do the top down analysis again because starting from like the higher time frames, because you gotta look for that exhaustion. How else are you gonna see it if you don't look at those time frames? You gotta look for the momentum in the candles, and that's like you got to look for those confirmations whatever your confirmations are you have to look for them and the only way you're going to look um to find them is if you look so yeah i would suggest always looking at all your time frames that was a pretty great answer <laughs> um okay zave zave z-a-v-a-e 
Hi, Tiara. This last week, I have been trading very short moves, and I realized after the market, I realized after that the market wasn't ready, mostly consolidation. How do you determine if one, the market's ready, and two, if a trade is worth your time? Um, well, patience. Yeah, I was, about to say, I, was, I was about to say, it's not like you don't really have a lot of patience. Uh, the uh, Jay, it's not like you yeah, are. No, do not. <laughs> It's not like you kind of anxious. It's not like you kind of like maybe rushing the trade. You maybe, you maybe just how, like I used to be like so anxious, like oh it's ready, it's ready. They're going to break in the retest, but it was a fake out. Like you about to clearly get faked out. It's not ready yet. So um, one thing that I did learn from the course and like reviewing the videos is that. Um, not all the time, but most of the time price gives you multiple confirmation. Like it'll break in the retest, like minor break in the retest, but then it give you a really clear break in the retest. So that's where the patience come in. You just got to be patient. Hey, thank you. Um, how do you pronounce your name? It's Xavier. Okay, I definitely messed that up. All the way up. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's cool. <laughs> no, I still try to give people respect, and I think your name is the number one thing I respect. So, Xavier. All right. Xavier. Okay, Natoya. Hi, Tiara. Congratulations on successfully complete, completing the automated course. How do you balance trading in a full time job? Do you set alerts? and such when you're not physically able to track the movement of the market we kind of briefed on that already but go yeah ahead. we kind of really covered that but just in short um it is not the easiest thing in the world like uh just will tell y'all today i work today from 7 a.m to 7 30 and when i got out of work i literally sped home to be on the call on time um started to prepare dinner in between like waiting for the call to start like I'm pretty sure my kids is out there screaming because they're ready to eat but um yeah it's 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 not the easiest thing in the world but it takes dedication it takes persistency it takes consistency like you just gotta you could you just gotta know how bad you want it and how important it is to you um I do set alerts I also like not gonna lie I hope none of my patients never see this zoom call but like sometimes I'm literally like pulling up charts at work on my thing and I should be like in the patient chart like before I go and consult with a patient but I'm like marking up a chart like literally last week um I had to tell myself you know what Sierra you got to be more disciplined like I have to find time at work to trade and not trade because I was actually at work I was a little distracted last week and I was waiting for a buy on gold. And I said, as soon as it get here, I'm going to see with rejection and it's going to be a buy. But I have been scalping it for like the last hour taking sales. Tell me y'all why I got in. I hit the wrong button, like literally meant to press buy and press sell. I lost that <laughs> trade, but it was because I was distracted for no other reason. So I made a commitment to myself. When I am distracted like that, I just will not trade. I don't care if I have to watch that trade play out right before my eyes. I don't care if I have been waiting for that trade to play out all week. I just cannot take the trade because I'm trying to be just as consistent as Jessica. I don't want to lose trades. Losing trades is not a good feeling. It's not especially when you've been waiting for that. And it was just a silly mistake. So um, you just got to be consistent. You just got to like, you just got to know your why. And you just got to have dedication and you can do it. Like I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Like, just know that, like you could do it. You could have kids. Like sometimes I wait till my kids go to sleep and I lay there and I say, okay, everybody sleep. Okay. The house quiet. Okay. I sneak in my office and I go put on my computer and I just sit at the charts and I mark up. Like you have to find that time. You got to do what works for you and how it works for you. Sometimes I lay in the bed with my laptop with all the lights off and I dim my screen on my, com on my laptop and I just look at the charts. But you have to do what works for you. And it's very possible. It's very possible. You just got to find your niche. All right. Very last question. Cause I forgot you had texted me a um, screenshot question. So... <sighs> 
actually it's two. The first one is I had a question on what time frame do you take your one trade a day off of? Is it based off of your one hour or your four hour structure? Um, so really when I do that one trade a day, I I like to do it off of the four hour, but sometimes it actually plays out really nicely off of the one hour. It just really depends on the move. You gotta really know your move and what you're looking for. Um, so sometimes it actually sets up really nice on the four hour, but sometimes it sets up nicely on the uh, one hour as well. So it really just depends what the market gives you. Also, I want to say this because Nellis has talked about how he looks at the four hour also. Um, I want to just say this because this is something that I feel like somebody had wrote in the comments about just because they're basing their overall move off the four hour doesn't mean they're entering off the four hour. Okay. So that's two different things. Like, Looking at your structure and determining where the market is going and actually entering is a different set. Okay, everybody clear on that? All right, so um, last question. Okay, uh, and I mean, I could really answer this question, but do you have, to, do you first need to, this is one that DM'd her, do you first need to have some type of experience to really understand Jessica's course in simplest terms? Can a beginner learn from this? Only if you're in the automated course. If you are in a group course, you 100% have to have experience before you come to me. Okay, because it will not be worth it if you don't. <laughs> in the automated course, you don't need experience, but Kiri, I mean, I'm sorry, not Kira, Tier. My line sister named Kira and she just says me, but go ahead, Tia. Um, so in the automated course, uh, as I responded to the gentleman who asked me that question, this course really provides you what you need to know how to trade. Um, multiple people have asked me in my story on Instagram, like what type of experience I had. And to be like, just honest, I only traded with a multi-level marketing company. And they just really wanted you to sign people up. So they had this thing, you know, you, um, what was their slogan? Um, copy and paste or something like that. And so I used to copy the signals and just, you know, plug them in MT4. And, you know, I didn't really know how to read candles. I didn't know about zones. I didn't know about trend lines. I didn't learn that. And so even though I was as like, just throwing rocks in a puddle, <laughs> I wasn't trading. And so basically everything I learned about trading, I learned from Jessica's course. Um, and so it has everything that a, be a beginner um, needs to know and to understand and to be successful from uh, trading. It is really complete. The course is everything you need. All right, so uh, it's 9.30. Thank you, Tiara, so much for your time because one, your kids are in the other room and ready to eat and you did not have to hop on here after working a 12-hour day. So I appreciate your dedication. But a, a question that I want to pose to everybody, and this is for people on YouTube too, because I'm very, very, like y'all know, I'm super honest when it comes to this. Like you have to ask yourself, are you trading for... Um, Is it a passion or are you just doing it because you see everybody making money and you want to make money? Because if you're not passionate about it, the money's not going to be, the interest in money is not going to be enough to sustain you through the journey. It's not. Like, and I 100% believe for everybody that's on Facebook and has not like, like you interested in the course, but you don't know if you want to get it. I don't think you should buy the course if it's the second one. If you just see a whole bunch of people making money and you're like, oh, like I need to make some money. So I need to do this course, whatever. Please don't do it. Like, I don't want you to, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't do this course for money. I do this course to change lives. And I truly believe like it's only a certain amount of people it's only a certain select people that um, I'm in alignment with. Everybody's not going to be aligned with me. I'm not going to be aligned for everybody. I'm not for everybody. and Everybody's not for me. And this course is not for everybody. Um, but that's a very key question. 
just in life, because you can be a millionaire so many different ways. You could be a multimillionaire baking cookies and have a bomb ass cookie place and then go make a franchise cookie place in that cookie place. Insomnia cookies. That's one. You know what I'm saying? Famous Amos. That's another one. Like Jenny's ice cream. Like think about how many places like have started from the ground up and these people are multimillionaires, but that was their passion. You know what I'm saying? You could be a multimillionaire at anything that you work hard enough in and at. But if trading is not your passion, I don't think you should try to do it or invest the time because you're going to find a lot of like annoyances. And how do you know? This is the question that you need to ask yourself. Um, it's a book called The Alchemist that talks about like your personal legend and stuff like that and how there's something called winner's luck or something in the beginning of the book, but it's like winner's luck or something where everything is going to happen correctly at first. And then the universe, which I look at is God, but in the book, they talk about the universe testing you or whatever to see if you have the wherewithal to sustain it. That's completely different than everything being against you from the very beginning. And you don't even know why you're doing something. You have to have your why as to why you're doing it and actually be passionate about this in order for it to work because that's the only way you're gonna put in the work. Trading is not gonna come just by being like, hey, I wanna go make money today. Like, no, like it's, it's, it's scars that everybody who's like successful at this, them long nights, you can't get around it. That homework, you can't get around it. Like you just don't wake up seeing it the work is there so that you train yourself to see it. All right. Makes sense. Hey, is, it, is the call almost over? Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow. Yeah, but um, yeah, Jessica, this, uh, I don't know if you can see me, but um, I'm Zach. I just I started your course. That. Yeah, I just started your course last week. Like, um, I, I really bumped into you like a, like a year ago, I think. And, um, before I even knew you had a course, so I just want, I just want to say like what I learned so far. Like I appreciate your course and everything like that. I'm still on um, ep episode two, but yeah, like before I, before I even wanted to know how to trade, like I bumped into you and I was following you on IG. So it just like kind of triggered me to want to trade. So like the last year, like I've been trying to figure out how to do it. So I finally bought your course. But yeah, it was nice to get on the card. Oh, thank you, Zach. Um, and then, um, well, that's pretty much it. All right. So I love you guys. Have a good night. I'm going to see y'all next week. Um, we'll probably like get into the charts next week, actually, because my energy is coming back, y'all. Okay. I just hit my second trimester. Woo -woo. <laughs> so hopefully this is the time that my right. emotions start to you know, bring themselves together and not be all over the place. Okay. Enjoy and it all. Enjoy it all. all. Not be all over the place. <laughs> all right. All right. Tierra, thank you so much again. I appreciate you so much.